Hey, good afternoon, guys. Um, it's November 30th, and I'm back on the road again, just headed into work. I've um, got a couple of training appointments this afternoon, and then I'm going to hit my GSP workout after that, later tonight, with the help of a little bit of uh, Jack 3D. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was the system that I use for uh, planning out my meals. It's a little bit different. It tends to be a little bit different than what is typically shown um, in a lot of forum threads. You guys are usually asking about uh, just, you know, set macronutrient numbers. Say that somebody jumps on the forum and they want to and they want to try to set up a diet for themselves, and they say, okay, I need 200 grams of protein, and I need 300 grams of carbs, and I need 100 grams of fat. Okay, so they're going to view all their, their all their foods for that day, and and their major goal for that day is going to be to hit those exact same numbers. They're going to try to hit that 200P, that 300C, and that 100F, and that's, that's their biggest priority. Um, to me, I used to do that. I used to eat like that. And I, I feel like I found a, a simpler way, and I've taught people, um, you know, a lot of people about this method, and it seems to really work for them well. It's, it just kind of teaches you how to eat and how to view food as eating for a reason. Um, and not, not just aimlessly eating. Um, so my method basically views foods as certain uh, macronutrient sources. So let's just take whey, for example. Whey is going to be viewed as a primary protein source, obviously because the, the bulk of, of calories coming from whey are going to be uh, protein calories, the four calories uh, per gram of protein. Let's, let's take an example for carbs. Let's use oatmeal for that. Um, oatmeal is going to be a, primarily a carb source. Why? Because the calories in in oatmeal are going to be majorly formed from uh, carbs. Okay. Yeah, there's some protein in there, and there's a couple grams of fat, but the majority of the calories are coming from carbs, and that's that's the four calories per gram as well. And just to reiterate, on a fat source, let's say um, walnuts. Okay. Walnuts I view it as a primary fat source, and once again, why? Because the calories are coming from primarily fat, fat calories, and that's the most dense at nine calories per gram of fat. So when I'm constructing my meals, um, that that's how I think of it in my head. I need a primary protein source, um, and either and also I need a primary carb source and a primary fat source. Or I'll just go with like a P plus C meal or a P plus F meal. Right now, um, in this, uh, in my bulking journal, you're, you're seeing a lot of P plus C plus F. Right now, I'm a big fan of that. It seems to be working out real well for me. Um, keeps me full and it keeps my macros balanced. So I'm getting my protein, carbs, and fat uh, basically in every meal, and I'm getting those throughout the day. I don't eat like a certain post-workout meal or a certain pre-workout meal. Every meal is, is basically just proportioned out equally, um, protein, carbs, and fat. So when I construct a meal, obviously I'm going to have a pea. I always have a protein in there. And right now that just happens to be um, about 200 calories uh, of, a, of a primary protein source, which has given me around 50 grams of protein. And once again, I say around 50 because uh, let's say I use cottage cheese, okay? and I have 200 calories of cottage cheese, um, there's, there's going to be some carbs in there and there's going to be some fat, so it's not like I'm just getting my straight 50 grams of protein. But I'm primarily getting protein from that, and that's all I care about. And that's why you know, I'm not obsessed with my macros. Um, and, let's, and then I'm going to throw in a carb source. Um, I've been just downing the Ezekiel bread lately. That, that's been really good for me. Um, it treats me a little bit better than, than uh, just regular bread. It's actually flourless, and I, I tend to like it a lot. It's filling. It tastes good. It just feels clean and natural to eat. Um, and so there, you know, I'll get a couple hundred calories from Ezekiel bread. I don't, I don't view it as I need to eat, uh, eat this much Ezekiel bread to get this many grams of carbs. I view it as I need to eat this much Ezekiel bread to get this many total calories, which are primarily coming from carbs. So it's a, it's a different view. It's, it's not your typical view. Um, and then I'm going to throw a fat in with that. 
it's all, and it's typically going to be peanut butter now because I just have a peanut butter sandwich. And it's Ezekiel bread and peanut butter. A couple hundred calories from peanut butter. I don't, I'm not looking for a set amount of fat, but I know that it's going to be close if my protein, or if my source is a primary fat source, okay? I believe that a serving of peanut butter is about 16 grams of fat, and it's, it's 200 calories. And that's why, you know, there's some protein in there and there's some carbs in there too. So, like I said, I'm taking a food that's primarily giving me calories from one macronutrient source, either protein, carbs, or fat. And then I'm trying to eat a certain amount of calories of that food. And that's all I really care about. I don't total out my macros every day. Um, if I did, you know, I know they'd be in, in some specific range but and it's just a range, you know, it really doesn't matter that much whether I hit my 200 protein every day. It doesn't matter if I hit my 300 grams of carbs perfectly or if I hit my, my 100 grams of fat perfectly. That, it just doesn't matter that much. And you really shouldn't obsess over that. And by viewing foods as a primary nutrient source, a primary macronutrient source, you're just trying to get your calories in, that's going to really overrule the whole obsessive compulsive thing about hitting your set number of macros every day. Calories, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Macro ratios and, you know, macronutrient grams, grams of this and grams of that, that, that comes second. You cannot get hung up on that uh, too much. It, it will just, honestly, it, it'll just bear you. You'll, you'll be too obsessed with it, you'll get sick of it, um, and you'll just, you'll just fall off the train right there. So, main, so the main points, main points to think about, find your foods that are primary macronutrient sources, good protein sources, cottage cheese, whey, chicken, fish, lean beef, uh, those are all great primary protein sources, uh, carb sources, primary carb sources, oats, sweet potatoes, breads, rice, fruits, vegetables. Um, there's a lot of primary carb sources out there, too many for me to just list off right now. Um, and then some good primary fat sources, avocados, uh, uh, walnuts, almonds, any kind of nut really, peanuts, peanut butter, olive oil. Um, those are all great, great fat sources as well. Um, you, you can get some, some natural fat sources as well from eating, you know, like your, uh, like your less lean cuts of beef. And one perk of this system of nutrition is basically the fact that it's going to keep your food choices natural. You're really not going to find too many, too many unnatural food sources that, or actually you're not going to find too many natural food sources that are going to give you a bunch of calories from carbs and a bunch of calories from fat. If you find a food that, that, that contains a lot of carbs and a lot of fat, um, Chances are it's going to be man-made, it's going to be processed, it's going to be something like a bag of chips, uh, a pizza, crackers, you know, just just something like that, ice cream, and that stuff's definitely not going to fall into that natural category. So that's one perk of this little system of nutrition is it forces you to eat uh, natural, healthier foods. And the reason that I brought that point up is because I brought up the fact that you can get some fats from uh, from red meat or, you know, like some types of uh, fattier fish too. And yes, there are some foods that, that are going to give you two macronutrient sources um, and you just got to get smart with those. You just got to say, okay, so I'm looking for, you know, 200 calories from, pro, uh, from a primary protein source and then say 200 calories from a primary fat source. Well, you can just do the math and, and just know that 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 fatty fish or that whole milk or that or that fatty beef source is going to give you a little bit of both, um, and it makes things a little more complicated. But it really doesn't take um, a whole lot of thinking to just get the hang of that and and just incorporate those kind of foods into your diet too. The system is easiest when you eat um, foods that primarily contain one macro uh, one macronutrient. Um, it just gets a little more complex when you start using foods that contain two, um, and you're pretty much never going to find a food that's that's going to contain all three that that you should be eating anyways. Um, 
So that's that's basically a rundown of my approach to nutrition. Um, that's the approach that I'm taking right now, and I, I'll probably take that approach for the rest of my life. Um, it's simple. It works. Uh, you guys can see that it works for me with my progress pictures, and I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Face-to-face -face for everybody that's following uh, this clean bulk thread, this photo journal. Um, and I just want to say thanks for all you guys that are following it. Um, if you're interested in training the way that I train, you can just hop on the GSD program that, uh, that I created. Um, there's a thread for that on bodybuilding.com, or you can just go to www.2020-wellness.com slash GST. Um, go check it out if you're interested. It's a great program, and uh, you get a free program design with every ebook purchase. So um, any other questions you guys have, drop them in my thread, and um, I could possibly do a video blog on it for you. So thanks a lot, and I'm going to get to work now.